Hi, my name is Eileen Medina. Today we will be discussing the United States Constitution and focusing on the Bill of Rights. I am sure that at some point in your life you have learned about the first 10 amendments of the Constitution. One thing we don't realize is that we exercise one or more of these rights in our lives every day. Over the next couple of minutes, we will learn a little bit about how they were added to our Constitution, discuss the meaning of each amendment, and even have a little fun. On September 25, 1789, based on the suggestions made by State Representatives and James Madison, the 17 amendments were proposed to the first United States Congress. Ten of the 17 amendments, known both the Bill of Rights and Citizen Rights, were approved by Congress December 15, 1791, and added to the Constitution. Now let's do a quick, fun overview of each of the first ten amendments. The First Amendment protects citizens from any laws that could interfere with their freedom of religion, speech, free press, and free assembly. Oui. No. In America, you have the right to practice any religion. Essentially, the First Amendment gives us the right to be who we are and express the way we think. The Second Amendment protects citizens' rights to keep and bear arms. As you can see, this amendment gives us the right to safely keep a gun in our own homes as long as it is lawfully registered by the state and the gun owner is of legal age. The Third Amendment protects homeowners from quartering soldiers without their consent. Is that nobody knows what the Third Amendment is? The law protects is. us from our own stranger in uniform demanding to sleep in your bed and eating the last of your Oreos. The Fourth Amendment protects citizens' rights from unlawful searches and seizures. The Fifth Amendment protects the rights of defendants by establishing the proper rules and procedures for a fair trial, specifically indictment by grand jury and eminent domain, protects the rights to due process, and prohibits self-incrimination and double jeopardy. The, <laughs> the Sixth Amendment protects the right of the defendant, protects the rights to a fair and speedy trial, including the rights to be notified of the accusation, to confront the accuser, to obtain witnesses, and to retain counsel. Right, maybe I did, but I didn't shoot him. Checks out. No, sir, you're free to go. Good, because I got a hot date tonight. The Seventh Amendment establishes the right to a jury for certain civil trials. In America, anyone accused of a crime has a right to their day in court until proven guilty. The Eighth Amendment protects against cruel and unusual punishment. Even if you committed a crime, you are still expected to be treated up to human standards. The Ninth Amendment states that just because the right is not in the Constitution, it does not mean that it doesn't exist. The Tenth Amendment limits the powers of the federal government to those delegated to it by the Constitution. The Tenth Amendment was enacted by folks who remembered what it was like to have a very oppressive government, to be under the thumb of tyrants and an all-powerful government. Essentially, if the Constitution doesn't specifically grant the power to the federal government, it automatically stays with the people and or state government. As you can see, based on our quick overview of each amendment, 200 years later, we still use the Bill of Rights in our lives every day. This is why the Constitution is such an important part of our history. Thank you for watching.